Yeah, I'm John Sladek, veteran of World War II. B-17 was my plane I flew in. I was ball turret gunner in 35 missions over Germany. And I went into the Air Force right out of high school at 18. My name is Art Wolaski, and I'll be interviewing John Sladek, a veteran of World War II. I'm interviewing John for the Veterans History Project at the Library of Congress. The interview is taking place at the Bryant Broadcast Center in Plainfield, Illinois, on Saturday, June 14, 2008. Please join me in welcoming Air Force veteran John Sladek. Yeah, I'm John Sladek, veteran of World War II. B-17 was my plane I flew in. I was ball turret gunner in 35 missions over Germany. And I went into the Air Force right out of high school at 18. And uh, I went to gunnery school in Tindallefield, Florida right after basic training. I flew to different cities for different, for crew training, crew gathering. And I went to, uh, from Panama City, Florida, we flew to Salt Lake City. From Salt Lake City, we went to Dalhart, Texas. From Dalhart, Texas, we went to Gulfport, Mississippi. From Gulfport, Mississippi, we flew to Norfolk, uh, Virginia. On our way overseas, we stopped, we took off from Bangor, Maine. We flew to Goose Bay, Labrador, Iceland, Scotland, and ended up in England where I joined the 381st Bomb Group. And I was assigned to the 535th Bomb Squadron. I flew 35 missions. Wow. I, uh, on my 10th mission over Munster, Germany, I was wounded with flak shrapnel. On December 9th, over, uh, I think it was Stuttgart. Our plane was shot up pretty bad. And the pilot figured we couldn't make it back across the channel. So we landed at a unoccupied fighter strip, which wasn't long enough for the bomber. The bomber went into a gully and we went nose up, rather nose down, because the tail went up. And I was injured again. I had a head wound ended up in the hospital for a couple of days. We, the hospital was an old, uh, I guess you would call it a mansion because they had a dance floor which was now a hospital ward. And uh, they figured the Germans might break through at that time so they flew us back to England where I was back to my base and I was put back on flying status and I ended up my missions. I had 35 altogether. And then I flew, we uh, went back to the States on convoy. And when I went back to uh, Santa Ana, California, they wanted me to go to gunnery instructor for B-29s and I said I had enough points to get out so I got out. All right. John, uh, for the record, uh, we need to have your state, have you state your full name, your uh, birth date, and where you were born. Uh, John Joseph Sladek, born in Chicago, Illinois, May 5th, 1925. And your branch of service? United States Air Force. John, uh, what did your parents do to make a living? My dad... They both had a mom and pop grocery store. Wow. Yeah. And where was that at? At uh, 38th and Millard in Chicago, Southwest Side. John, uh, before entering the military service, what were you doing? I was in high school. And right after high school? Right you after high school, I graduated. And, and now, were you drafted or did you Well, I had a draft number, but I had a choice at that time. There was a program going on where I, could ha where I had a choice. Mm -hmm. Navy or Air Force or and, and I chose the Air, the Air Force. Force. Great. 
Where did you go for your basic training again? Basic training, I went to, it was a cadet program mm -hmm. in uh, Miami Beach. But then the cadet program was phasing out, mm -hmm. so they were transferring people into different branches as, as armors and mechanics, and mm -hmm. I ended up in gunnery school in Tyndall Field, Panama City. What was included in your basic training, John? Well, all kinds of the physical training let you take uh, physical training. Just yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you receive any specialized training in gunnery school? In the gunnery yeah, school. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. How did you feel about getting into the military service? Well, well, at that time it was I, it didn't bother me. I, I knew what I wanted to get into. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. In fact, I wanted to join the Marines. But I went downtown in Chicago, and I got in line to join the Marines. Mm -hmm. But they closed the door, and there was about <laughs> 10 guys left in line, they closed the door, and they come back tomorrow, and... You couldn't wait, so I you went to the back. Air Force. I didn't go back, and <laughs> I ended up in this, the Air Force. Now, during the basic training part, how did you, how, how was the food you know, and the uh, food was overseas. The food was good, and the yeah. social life, like when you were going through basic training. Well, they had dances and, and uh -huh. movies and uh -huh. stuff like that. They, we played uh, touch football and baseball. And yeah. Well, when you were in football, were you the quarterback? No, I was a runner. Oh, you're <laughs> a, run <laughs> a runner and a gunner. Now, when you were overseas, what kind of act uh, action did you see? that you were involved in. You mean what, on what type of action? on a bombing run? Yes. Well, I, I don't know how to, how to answer that because I was sitting in a, in a ball turret mm -hmm. and it kept moving it, kept moving it because you were always looking for for the enemy. For enemy planes and but uh, otherwise I when, when was it when you first saw your first combat mission, your first, your first actual combat? What am I doing here? <laughs> <laughs> what am I doing? And where, where was that at? The first mission, I can't remember what my first mission was. I have a s list of missions here. It was All uh, right. Let's Osnabrück, hear some of those. Germany in September 44. Osnabrück, Germany uh -huh. was my first mission. That was six hours and 20 minutes. Well, you've even got the time, though. You're well, all on there. Mm -hmm. How often did you uh, fly? How, you know, how often did you fly on your missions? Well, and according to this, by memory, it was three days in a row, then two days off, then another one, then two days off, then, then five, six, seven, eight, three days in a row. So you did have a, a little break oh, between yeah, missions yeah, then? Yeah. Uh -huh. They'd wake us up. Turn the lights on, blow a whistle, and did all this hollering and tell you what plane you're assigned to, and uh -huh. get on the truck and go to the mess hall, and from the mess hall they get on the truck and go to the plane and dress and wait for the green flare to go up, and then you take off. Take off. Yeah. Now you were 18 when you joined when you joined up. I was 18 when I was in high school, right? Right, and uh, and you spent a year overseas. Spent a year here. Before and when I went overseas, I was 19. You were 19 when you yeah. were overseas, okay. And how old were you when you, got, when you came back? Well, I was there almost a year. When I came back, I was 20. Okay. And that's, so there was a whole year of actual real combat you almost were involved in. Almost a year, yeah, yeah. Anything else you'd like to tell us about that combat time that really stands out in, in your mind, John? Well, the one that really stands out was that one that we got forced down in because the guys, the guys that got killed and wounded on that plane, I think there was only about three that weren't injured. Mm -hmm. and, uh, that was the one that stands out the most. Because mm -hmm. these were the guys that you lived with. You were like your 
brothers. Getting all choked up now. But otherwise, you went on one mission, it was like the next one. Mm -hmm. You went to bed at night, the whistle would blow in the morning, you get up and, and you go to the mess hall, you dress, get on the plane, take off, come back. Next day, start all over start again. All over again. Were you on any of those famous missions like Cologne and stuff like that? And how many planes were involved in the mission? And just well, tell us a little bit of something about it. Some of my missions, I was uh, Cologne twice. We had missions, and they were like seven-hour raids. Mm -hmm. And the, we went to Schweinfurt a couple of times, and Nuremberg a couple of times, Bremen which you call the big, the little B in Berlin with the big B. Mm -hmm. But I was lucky I had two Berlin missions scrubbed on me. We were just about ready to take off and they shot the red flare. That means mission scrubbed. Uh -huh. And then you went, oh man, am I lucky. <laughs> we didn't have to go to Berlin. And Magdeburg, which is out, that was another big one. And there were planes, there were planes, some of those, you looked like the sky, look out, and you could see planes everywhere you looked. There was bombers, be thousands, five hundred to a thousand, maybe. Uh -huh. Just on one raid. Some of those raids, yeah. Now sometimes they'd split off. They'd go to. Uh, they wouldn't all go to the same target. They'd mm -hmm. split and find different targets. Sometimes mm -hmm. if the target was overcast and they couldn't find the target, they'd have a secondary target. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that was worse than the original target. So. Yeah, there's a lot of planes up in the air, a lot of men up there. Mm -hmm. A lot of them never come back. And on those missions, John, uh, you say there were thousands coming back, and say in your, uh, just in your uh, squadron. Yeah. Did they all, when they all went out, did they all come back? No. There were four squadrons to the one to one group. Mm -hmm. It was five, thirty-second, thirty-third, thirty-fourth, and thirty-fifth. I was in the thirty-fifth. Mm -hmm. And there would be like maybe four or five planes from each squadron mm -hmm. making up that one group. Mm -hmm. But then there's each group had maybe 10, 20 planes, you know, and mm -hmm. there, there would be 24s and B 26s and B 25s and the B 25s and B 26s, they were low level bombing. Mm -hmm. We were up above the clouds and like. like 20, 25, 30,000 feet, mm -hmm. and you had to be on oxygen over 10, mm -hmm. over 10,000, we had to put on mm -hmm. oxygen. Mm -hmm. And we had uh, flag vests and May West mm -hmm. and flag helmets. Mm -hmm. Those were the guys that were in a turret. I didn't have any of that stuff in there with me because I couldn't get it in with me. <laughs> so. We had uh, earphones and throat mics mm -hmm. that we could communicate. We could communicate with the pilot and tell them what what you see and what's going on. And mm -hmm. to another, you could call the tail color and tell them there's so and so and so below and nine o'clock, mm -hmm. ten o'clock, you know, twelve o'clock. But uh, there was a lot of planes in the air, and there was a noise. Oh man. <laughs> Couldn't hear yourself think. <laughs> Especially if people are on the ground, and, and when, they, when the mission mm -hmm. started, and you were on the ground, and all mm -hmm. these planes started up their engines, mm -hmm. it was. Man, it was Did you guys fly yeah. through any rough weather and oh stuff? Yeah. Like? yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of times the, the, the group would break up because the weather was so bad that they, mm -hmm. they went off on their own mm -hmm. to get out of each other's way. You know? mm -hmm. Now, many, uh, many people in the service, they, f they formed a lot of friendships, lifelong friendships and all that. Did you still, how long, do you still have any of those that you keep in touch with? Well, I forgot to say that when I was in the hospital the first time, mm -hmm. my crew was shot down. Mm -hmm. And half of them were killed, and half oh. of them, I came back to the States and got in touch with them, mm -hmm. the ones that were left. and. 
they're, they're all gone now too. Mm -hmm. I, I think I'm the only one left. Wow. Now, how did you stay in, t when you were overseas, how did you stay in touch with your family and your friends at home? Were you able to just, do that? Just uh, writing letters. Just yeah, writing letters. letters. Yeah. Okay. When, uh, when my crew was shot down, the fellow that took my place on that mission was gone. Oh. So I took his place on his crew. Mm -hmm. And that's how I got to be on that stage door canteen. That was the name of our ship that I flew in most of the time. Mm -hmm. Now, John, when you had some free time, between missions, what did you do to kind of unwind a little bit? Well, we could go out into the small pubs in the, in the area. There mm -hmm. were small villages that was maybe mm -hmm. 10, 12 homes or something like that. You mm -hmm. know. So we do, we, like I said, we played baseball and football and uh -huh. saw movies and uh -huh. went to dances. And mm -hmm. Now, at the war's end, when you were coming home, where were you when the war ended, John? I think I was in the middle of the ocean on the convoy when Germany surrendered. Uh -huh. And I was home when Japan surrendered. I was already out of service when Japan uh -huh. surrendered. And how long were you overseas? Um, I think August to about 10 months. 10 months. Yeah. And you came back on a... On a Come back in a convoy. convoy. Well, we flew over to, mm -hmm. to start with. How, how were you received when you came home? How did your neighbors and your friends, how did they, how did, how, how did you, when you came back home, how, what well, was the feeling? They all, they all c congratulated me and uh -huh. glad to see you back. And uh -huh. The family well, friends have a gathering. Big parades or anything. <laughs> <laughs> How did you readjust to civilian life when you got back home? How long did it take you to get adjusted to civilian I life? I don't think again? I had any problem because I, I found a job in, at a R.R. Donnelly Printing and uh -huh. I was there for 42 years. Wow, 42 years. So it was it was pretty easy that you got home, got a job. Yeah, and I didn't. Uh, mm -hmm. Had a lot of a lot of the fellows that I hung out with and played ball with and mm -hmm. they were all coming back and uh -huh. so it just seems like we melded right into where we left off. Uh -huh. Did you join any of the like veterans organizations? I joined the, I now belong to the American Legion in mm -hmm. Plainfield. Mm -hmm. But uh, And do you remember what year you joined that? Well I joined, I lived up in Crivets, Wisconsin mm -hmm. and that's where I joined the American Legion there. Okay. And, uh, and I transferred down here, and I joined. And now you're living in Plainfield. Yeah, I thought we live in Carolina. Okay. Oh, Carolina. Okay. Yeah. And how many years have you been in the Plainfield area now? Uh, I think it's nine years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What year did you get married in? 1950. 1950. Right. And you met your wife when and where? I met her at a neighborhood dance. When? 19, a couple of years before that. Mm -hmm. And you we married her? We went to the same school, but we didn't, we didn't, we weren't, didn't we know didn't know each other at that uh -huh. time. Uh -huh. she, she didn't know me while I was in service, and uh -huh. it was after service that we met. Uh -huh. So she married an Air Force man. Yeah. All right. 58 years. 58 years. Congratulations. Thank you. John, John, let me ask you. Uh, you said you flew over 35 missions. Right. Can you describe some of those missions that you were involved in? What it was like, what you felt like, and what was happening while you were in that gunner position? Well, we, I was in the ball turret. You had to get up into the air to get down into the turret because the ha door, ha the hatch, you stepped down into it. The guns had to be pointed down. Mm -hmm. And when you sat down in it, then you had your controls in front of you, and then you you moved the turret around with the mm -hmm. control handles, mm -hmm. and your gun buttons were on top. Now, when we got into the air, we had to get in right after we took off. You couldn't get in from the outside because the guns had to be down. You 
could, mm -hmm. otherwise you'd be mm -hmm. falling up into it feet first, and that was pretty awkward. Mm -hmm. Then we got up into up into the air, and and that's when the action started. Once you crossed the channel, because you knew there was going to be somebody waiting for you. Mm -hmm. But at the time I went, it was already the Luftwaffe, the German Air Force, was already dwindling down, mm -hmm. and we had fighter escort going in. So we weren't, we didn't have as much trouble with fighters as we did with anti-aircraft. Mm -hmm. So otherwise, it was just, just, just looking around and, you know, watching, watching, you mm -hmm. just, you know, when they were going to come, you know. Did you shoot down any of the enemy aircraft? No. Not at all. I fired, but I never. Not, no. Too fast of a moving target. Saw, saw your guns going, so mm -hmm. they'd, you mm -hmm. know, they'd fly away. And mm -hmm. I don't think I even hit any. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, when you, when, you, when you got down into that, into that, that gunner pit, the g cockpit. Right. What went through your mind as you sat down in there and grabbed a hold of that, that weapon? I was wishing I was getting out of it instead of into it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, we had flying suits on and they were electrically heated. Uh, the jacket was plugged into the pants and mm -hmm. the boots were plugged into the, the pants legs. The gloves were plugged into the sleeves. Mm -hmm. And we had earphones on and throat mics. Mm -hmm. Over in our, some of the guys that were in the waist, they wore flak helmets, but I didn't get a flak helmet in, mm -hmm. in there with me. And some of the guys were s used their chutes. I couldn't get a chute in with me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My chute was always, in case I could g have to get out fast, the chute was right there. Mm -hmm. If I could, if I had time to put it on. But mm -hmm. now you say w w when you say your your plane was. Shot down? A B-7. No, it wasn't shot down, but it was. We couldn't make it back across the channel because we had two engines out. Oh. Pilot figured we couldn't make it back, so we landed at this airport at mm -hmm. uh, fighter strip. Mm -hmm. And the strip was long enough, and we hit the end, of, and it went into uh, the one wheel went into a ditch, and it nosed up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you say I, you say you lost one of your your your. The pilot was, the uh, co-pilot was hit by flak, and the radio man was hit by flak, and the navigator was hit by flak, and I was injured on the landing. Mm -hmm. I received a head wound, mm -hmm. and so that was... Now how long were you in the, ho uh, in the hospital? I was in the hospital there for about three days, I think, and mm -hmm. then they flew us back to to get us out of there, because mm -hmm. there was an old mansion that they, they, they formed into a field hospital, I guess you would call it, mm -hmm. and they flew us back to get us out of there because they didn't know if the Germans were going to break through, so. Mm -hmm. And then how long was, was it before you went back into uh, action again? Oh, it was just a couple of days. Really? Yeah. And where did you go for that? First action. Where where were you headed? Uh, I think I think I got it on here. It was this, it was on December 9th of forty four in Stuttgart, Germany. Mm -hmm. That was where we got shot up. Mm -hmm. Then our next one, some of these li were little towns where they call them milk runs, where nothing. Mm -hmm. You just went there and bombed and came back. Came back. Yeah. Nothing happened. I see you brought some articles with you that you've had for quite a long time. Could you kind of go over some of those articles with us? Yeah, I have a list of the 35 missions that I was on, d even the time and the, the city, mm -hmm. the date, and I went anywhere from 5 hours, 9 hours, 10 hours, mm -hmm. 8 hours. And those were all... 259, 200, 200, almost 260 hours of... Wow, 260 hours of missions. Yeah. And now then I have... Uh, paper here that they, we, we were supposed to show if we got shot down in, in Russian territory, mm -hmm. say that we were Americans and give you descriptions. And, and it's, actually we in, it's actually in Russian then, huh? Yeah. In Russian and English. Mm -hmm. 
I see you brought some photos too here. Of, of, is this your plane? Well, I don't know if that's mine, but it's one of them from the uh -huh. group. We had the triangle L on our mm -hmm. on our on our tail. These are all bomb runs. When you were on a bomb run, you couldn't take evasive action. You had to stay go focused. You do what they call the initial point. I, the IP. Once you were on the IP, you went. Mm -hmm. You couldn't move around. You know. Mm -hmm. That's when you were the sitting duck for fighters. And then uh, I have the picture of the plane. The plane that I flew on most was this called the Stage Door Canteen. <laughs> and it was uh, christened by Sarah Churchill. Sarah Churchill's Churchill. daughter, yeah. Wow. Is this your is this your crew? This is the crew that I joined after. Mm -hmm. This is my second crew. My first crew was shot down. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Where are you at in there? Right here. Oh, okay. This is the plane that hit, hit the nose and... Oh, this is the one that went nose down? The buff that wouldn't make it back. Mm -hmm. These are all this little... In the inside of the... Oh, that's where you crawl into? No, that's... Oh, that's just the inside of the plane, okay. Yeah, the ball turret was down here. This okay. is This is the waist, the two waist positions. Mm -hmm. 50 caliber sticking out of each side. Mm -hmm. This is going from the door when you get in towards the radio room, which it was mm -hmm. back here in the bomb bay. Mm -hmm. This is the nose where the bombardier navigator had their guns. And mm -hmm. That's about it. John, uh, now you were 18 years old when you were in that gun turret. Oh, no, I was I was 18 when I went in. Oh, yeah, well, by the time I got overseas, I was 19. Oh, okay. Now, your crew on that on that, on, on, on them missions, what were their average age? I mean, how old were they? They were all in there. I think I was the youngest. Mm -hmm. They were all. I think a couple of them were married. Mm -hmm. The pilot, I couldn't tell you how. They must have been in their 20s, too, mm -hmm. 23, mm -hmm. 24, something like Still that. Still young men. Yeah. Yeah. They were, they were all, yeah, they were mm -hmm. all young guys. And like, where, do you know like where they were from? What part of the country they were from? Uh, where they were born? I don't. No. I don't. no. Well, the waste gunner, I think, was from California. And then there was uh, the radio man was from, I think he was from California also. Mm -hmm. And I think our, uh, Co-pilot, I think was from Ohio. I think he's on one of these papers, right? He was a radio man. He lost his leg in that on that crew. He was a tail gunner. Mm -hmm. He was the navigator. He was a waste gunner. He was the engineer. Mm -hmm. This is what they call the toggle air. Instead of having a real bombard air, they had a nav uh, tog what they call a toggle air. He would pull the switch on the on the bomb release. Mm -hmm. That was. And how many was how many was in the crew? Nine. Is there nine on there? Eight. Nine. Nine. Okay. Yeah. They, they used. I think when they started out, they had ten. They had mm -hmm. two waste gunners, but mm -hmm. then they figured they didn't need them toward mm -hmm. at, after the war was about a year old or so. Mm -hmm. So they only went. They went down to nine from from the ten. So they had one, one waste gunner. He went from side to side, you know, depending on the attack. Mm -hmm. We're in 2008, way back in that uh, war time. What kind of technology did you guys have on the planes at, the, at that time? Well, I don't know. I think uh, not all the planes had these, what they call a Northern, Northern bomb site, mm -hmm. but all the planes didn't have them. They just had some of the lead planes of the groups, mm -hmm. and the other ones would just open their bomb bay doors and drop bombs on going on the, the lead plane. The lead planes. That had the bomb sites. So that was your tech technology yeah. then, just follow them guys and drop well them we out? Had, we used to have, on some of our bomb runs, we used to drop tin foil. It would goof up the enemy radar mm -hmm. where the guns were, oh. guns were run with the radar. Uh -huh. So we dropped tin foil and it would, you know, it would Confuse goof, the radar. goof up. When you uh, got back to England, 
And uh, did you socialize with the whole entire crew, or did you just kind of go off to yourselves, or what were the accommodations? Well, we we, our, we stayed in Quonset huts, and there were two crews to a hut, mm -hmm. and we sort of stayed together. You mm -hmm. know. But you knew fellows from other crews that you would mm -hmm. meet and go out and drink with, or you know, movie <laughs> with, or whatever. But it wasn't just the same guys all the time, you know. Mm -hmm. Because we had our Kwanzaa, Kwanzaa hut was right next to a farm. There was a, there was a, a barbed wire fence out along one side of our Kwanzaa hut, and the other side were horses. I had I don't I didn't bring one, but I got pictures of my feeding horses on the other side of the <laughs> fence. <too. laughs> but uh, like I said, we on our off time, which we didn't have, we I mean we had a day or two in between some mm -hmm. of the bombing runs, and we played ball and. Mm -hmm. Football, mm -hmm. went to movies, weekend dances once in a while, which I didn't go to because I didn't dance. Mm -hmm. <laughs> John, let me ask you, uh, when you were on a plane and you took flak the first time you were injured, describe for us how being shot. Well, the the flight came through in the back, in the back of me, right through the turret. The, the, the door hatch was over me. Mm -hmm. And it hit me in the side and in the back. And if I think if I'd had, I had my fingers on the control panels and, and the firing mm -hmm. buttons, I think if I would have had my hand closer down like this, it would have tore my arm off. But it, it sliced under my arm, into my little piece in my back. Mm -hmm. and that's, and it sound, felt like somebody hit you with a baseball bat. Wow, you know? wow. I crawled out and I, the, the uh, waist gunner taped me up and he put bandages on there and mm -hmm. and we were on our way back and they took me out mm -hmm. in the Good. ambulance. And when, when you got shot and, they, and they, they bandaged you up, did they tell you to get back on the on the controls again, or no? The, the radio man came and he went into the <coughs> into the turret because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I was. How long of a flight was it to get back after you got shot? Do you remember? The six-hour flight. Six-hour flight. But we were on our way back already, so mm -hmm. it might have been a couple hours before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. John, it's been said that England, when you were over there in England, yeah, that the Americans were. Overpaid, oversexed, and they're over here. What did you have to say well, about that? I didn't have that much contact with her except when we went to the pubs outside the gate, and uh, they they just mingled with us like any other. I didn't have any problem with them. Uh -huh. Just belly up and elbows, yeah, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, some of the pubs were so crowded you could hardly move. <laughs> But uh, I didn't have any problem with the people. They were they seemed to be nice. They'd come onto the base and they did work you know, mm -hmm. digging ditches and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Not what they call the honey wagons, you know. They <laughs> clean out the latrines and <laughs> honey wagon. <laughs> but uh, I, I that was that's the only time I come into contact with them. I didn't. Uh -huh. uh -huh. If we had a couple of times in London, but you went out by your, with the guys you came with, and you didn't. Uh -huh. have to uh -huh mingle with them, except mm -hmm. in if you went to a hotel or a store or something like that. You know. mm -hmm. Otherwise, they were all right. Have you been back overseas uh, no, since you've come back I here? I haven't been back. Never been back, huh? Uh, you like the good old USA. Said I don't want to go back because of the bombing, but yeah. I don't know, I just, mm -hmm. I figured there's nothing le that left there anyway. I mean, it's probably all rebuilt. You wouldn't even mm -hmm. know there was a war at that mm -hmm. time, about mm -hmm. 60 years ago or so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that you would like to maybe just say for in this day and time to the young military men in the services now, through your experiences in, in wartime, what would you like to have them understand about war in this day and age, and what it was like I for you? I don't know how to answer that because. I think the guy that had the roughest with the guys that were on the ground mm -hmm. in the infantry, the guys that landed at Normandy and stuff like that, they're mm -hmm. the guys that won the war. Mm -hmm. I don't mm -hmm. think uh, 
I hear anything special. Mm-hmm. In fact, they're, 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 I don't know. I don't. I don't think I could have taken what these guys, what they took, mm-hmm. in some of those battles that they had on the ground. Mm-hmm. No, what I, I, what I did was nothing compared to what they did. Well, I wouldn't say it was nothing, John. It's you put your life on the line for us. That's that's not just but nothing. When you see what I did and what what they did, and you see uh, there's no comparison. I don't think. Mm-hmm. But the ground soldier did. Mm-hmm. John, let me ask you: Do you have any? Did you have any brothers or sisters that were in the military service, or? No, I didn't. I just had, I had one sister, and that's all. Mm-hmm. Nobody. Uh-huh. A lot of all my friends were in service. Mm-hmm. Your high school Most friends. Most of them were in the Navy. Well, <laughs> they're your high school friends? Yeah, yeah. high school and yeah. neighborhood uh-huh. friends. Now, when you came back and you got your discharge papers and all that stuff, all the process, was that a long, drawn-out process? And how excited were you when you were saying, I'm getting my papers? Well, when they wanted me to go to gunnery, to, uh, it's a gunnery instructor for B-29s, and, I, and I'm thinking, gee, I don't think I'd like to do that. And when this, the officer looked at my papers, he says, I have enough points to get out. He said, you have, enough, you have more points than some of these guys that have been in mm-hmm. a year or two longer than you. So mm-hmm. I said, well, I'm on my way home then. <laughs> <laughs> so I went home and I got a job at R.R. Uh, R. Donnelly and Kearney. Uh-huh. And Forty-two years I stayed there, but uh, there, was no, there was no, I didn't feel any, uh-huh. it just it felt like a job you were going through, you know, uh-huh. Uh-huh. I didn't feel any different about being elated, oh well, I was glad to get out, but there was no big mm-hmm. ceremony or no ju- mm-hmm. jubilation mm-hmm. of mm-hmm. Just, just the thought of coming back home was good yeah, enough. Yeah, that was just good enough. Yeah. So is there anything else that you'd like to uh, let the folks know, John, about your experiences that you had when you were overseas? Is there something that really kind of like stands out in your mind and your heart that you want to convey to the folks? Well, I hate to say it, but, but it might break down. No, it's giant. Whatever's on your heart, you you just come off with it. We'd love to hear about it. I feel like the boy that took my place. Pardon? The boy that took my place. I feel like I shouldn't be here. Mm-hmm. You know, like there's a kind of an economy that he was lost. So mm-hmm. sometimes I feel like I shouldn't. Mm-hmm. I should be. Go on instead of him. Mm-hmm. Well, John, we are truly proud that you uh, stepped forward. And for men like you, we here in America now can enjoy the freedoms that we have because of men well, like you. I think we had to do what we had to do. Absolutely. To wait, and we're proud of it, too. We're proud of you, sir. There were no ifs, ands, and buts. I guess we just went. Uh-huh. You did your job, and you did it well. Thank you, John Sladek, for being here today to tell you a personal history of World War II. It has been an honor and a pleasure to talk with you. For the Plainfield Television Group, I'm Art Woloski. Thank you for watching.